So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 maths and in this video we'll be doing an AQA GCSE maths foundation topic test on basic decimals. Now there will be a copy of the test paper in the description below so you can have an attempt at uh, before watching this video or while watching this video as we go through the answers. So let's get started on these decimal questions. Now there is no indication about whether these questions are calculator or non-calculator so although the marks are written as to what each question is worth we're going to go for the non-calculator aspect so therefore the question might be worth more marks however if the question's calculator then it could be worth less marks so let's just have a go and we'll see how we fare on but i'll try and use both methods when answering each of the questions so for question one it says that the cost of a hot drink in a cafe are shown below we've got coffee tea and hot chocolate tom buys two chocolates and one tea he pays with a 10 pound note how much change does he get so for this let's just highlight the important bits of information so we're buying two hot chocolates and one tea and we are paying with a 10 pound note and we want to work out how much change does he get so let's work out what two hot chocolates cost so two hot chocolates so two ch plus one tea is going to be well two hot chocolates is two pounds so that's going to be four pound for two and the tea costs one pound 25 so all in all that's going to cost five pounds 25 then we need to take that away from 10 and so either you can do it mentally or you can do it by writing your answers down so if we borrow one borrow one borrow one there we go so we end up with five seven and then it's going to be four four seventy five is the change so moving on to question two, it says, which of the following is closest to a half? And it says, you must show you're working out. So what you want to do is you want to convert everything into decimals. And that's probably the easiest option rather than working with percentages or definitely better than working with fractions. Let's first of all convert a half as a decimal, which is 0 0.5. So that's what we want to try and see. Now for 11 over 20, there's a couple of ways in which you can do this. So we can either make it equal, the denominator equal to 10. So that's going to be 5.5. So that then gives us, when we divide by 10, we move the decimal point one place to the left, that becomes 0 0.55. Another alternative you could do is turn 11 over 20 into 100 as the denominator. And then here we're multiplying by 5, so that's going to be 55 over 100. So we're moving the decimal point two places in which you still get the answer of 0 0.55. Then for 23 over 50, well again, if I have the den denominator over 100, that's going to be 46 so that's going to be 0 0.46 then from this what we then just got to do is decide which one is going to be closest to 0 0.5 and again you could do this by simply doing it in your head as it's worth two marks i would say you get one mark just by converting those two fractions into decimals and then just giving you the right answer so this one here is going to be 0 0.42 away this one here is going to be oh that's no, sorry that's going to be no point oh no, no I was right and this one here is going to be 0 0.05 away this one here is going to be 0 0.043 and this one here is going to be 0 0.04 away so the plus and the minus are insignificant it's about which one's closest and which one is going to be closest is going to be this one so the correct answer we should have is 23 over 50. Moving on to question three, it says write 19 over 20 as a decimal. So again, just like we did before, what I'm trying to do is make the denominator either a nice denominator that we're aware of. So either one, three, four, eight, maybe um, 10, 100. And there we go. So let's turn it over to make it over 100. So we need to multiply both numbers by five. So then if I do 19 times five, so that gives me 45 and then nine so it's 95 and then the correct answer we're going to end up is 0 0.95 then moving on to question four it says that you are given that 56 times uh, 0 0.7 times 72 equals 2381.4 write down the value of 567 times 42 so for this to get this calculation i need to multiply that number by 10 which therefore means that I then need to multiply the answer by 10. 
So therefore then by multiplying by 10 and move the decimal point one place to the right to make it bigger so it becomes 23814. For the next question I'm then going to do write down the value of 238.14 divided by 56.7. Now if I just get rid of this let's just rejig what this looks like so it looks like a division so here I've got 2381.4 divided by that one there divided by and it's going to be 56.7 I know that that equals 42 now looking at this number here what I've done is I've divided the denominator by 10 so that means then I then need to divide this number by the 42 by 10 which therefore then gives me 4.2 it then says work out the value for c work out the value of 56.7 multiplied by 41 well for this question here we can see that we've got 56.7 times 42 so then to do 56 56.7 times 41 all i need to do is just take away uh, 56.7 away from 2381.4 so this is going to be, now I can either work out the calculation of this, so either can do 56.7 multiplied by 41, or I could do 3881.4 minus 56.7. And either of those are absolutely fine, whichever you prefer to do. So whether you prefer multiplying with decimals, or you prefer taking away decimals, in which we should end up with the correct answer of 2. Two, three, two, four point seven. Moving on to question five, it says which is larger, sixty-two percent or five eight? So again, what we want to do here is convert them both into decimals. So this is going to be zero point six two and five eight. Well, that's going to be eight and five, and let's just stick a few zeros in there. So 8 is going to 5, none, carry the 5. That goes into 6, remainder 2. And that goes into 2, remainder 4. So it's going to be 0 0.625. So which of these is larger? Well, it's going to be 5 eighths. Moving on to question 6, it says write these numbers in order, starting with the smallest. So again, what we want to do is we want to convert all of these into decimals, preferably with the same number of numbers after the decimal point. So this number here is going to be 0.6666. Uh, this number here is already written, so that's not minus 0 0.700. 5 eighths, we've already worked on the previous answer, so we just stick a minus in there, so it's going to be minus 0 0.625. And then here we've got minus 701. Now here we're looking for the smallest. So the smallest is one with the biggest integer. So here then what we're looking for, or not smallest integer, Hopefully you know what I mean in terms of the digits. So the smallest one is this one here. So that's going to be minus 0 0.701. The next smallest is minus 0 0.7. The next smallest out of the two is minus two thirds. And then the largest number is minus five eighths. Moving on to question seven, it says write 0.44 as a fraction in its simplest terms. So this is going to be now again, how I usually teach this is basically write the number, we're ignoring the decimal point. So that's going to be 0, 044 over, we stick a one and then we write how many zip numbers there are after the decimal point, there's two. So I'm going to write two zeros. So that then becomes 44 over 100. And then this is the fraction we then want to simplify. So we've got 22 over 50, so it's 11 over 25. And there we go. Moving on to question eight, it says here is a number machine and it says to work out the output when the input is 4.5. So we've got 4.5 here. So what I need to do is do 4.5 minus 1.5, which gives me three. And then what I then want to do is do 3 times 0 0.8, which is going to give me an answer of 2.4. Moving on to question B, it says work out the input when the output is 6.4. So if I just get that back up, so I'm going to do 
divided by 0 0.8, which as a fraction seems a bit easier to do. So that then becomes 64 over 8, which becomes 8. And then we then want to add 1.5. That then becomes 9.5. Then moving on to our last question, it says that a mobile phone company has three text packages. Bundle A is 150 text messages for £6, then 5p each, each message. Bundle B is 4.2 pence per text. Bundle C is first 50 texts cost three pence. After that, it costs 5p for them after 50. Well, first 50 texts uh, cost three pence each and then 5p for each text after 50. And Adrian wants to send 200 text messages. Work out the best bundle. Um, you must show you're working out. Showing the age of this question, obviously we don't pay for text messages. Well, it's quite rare for anyone to do that. So anyway, so looking at this, what we want to do is we want to send, this is worth four marks. So for bundle A, we know that we're going to send 50 texts. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to do, well, first 150 is at so six pounds. So let's just do that. So here we've got six pounds and plus, and then 200 take away 150 is 50. So then I'm going to do 50 times five pence and again we want to work with our decimal so we're going to write it in pounds as 0 0.05 so from this what we then got to do is just simply work this out now again you can do this in any which way you want so here we've got 50 times 0 0.5 and whichever way you do that and again if this was on a non-calculated paper you just have to work it out but you should get an answer of two pound fifty so all in all, I don't know why I put the decimal point there, so let's just do that. And so all in all, bundle A to send 200 text message is going to cost £8.50. Then working out the cost for bundle B, well that's going to be 200 multiplied by 0 0.042. So working that out, let's just do that over here, so we've got 200 and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.042. So if I move the decimal point three places that way, that then becomes 200 times 42. So then if I then do 200 times 42, whichever way you prefer doing it, whether you want to do the grid method or you want to do the column method, we should end up with an answer of 840. So we then need to move, sorry, 8,400. So we then move the decimal point three places back so that then becomes 8.4. So the cost for bundle B is going to be £8.40. Then finally for bundle C, the first 50 texts are 3 pence. So that's going to be 50 times 0 0.03. And then we need to, the next 50, which is going to be 150, so because we've got that how many text messages we've got left, is going to be charged at 5 pence. So let's now just quickly work that all out. So here we've got 50 times 0 0.03, which then becomes 50 times three, which is 150. But I need to move the decimal point two places, that becomes one pound 50. Then for the next 150, so then I'm gonna do 150 times by 0 0.05, which is 150 times five, and that gives me 750. I then need to move the decimal point two places back. That becomes £7.50. So then adding up these two amounts, it comes up to £9. So then going back to the original question, which work out which is the best bundle for Adrian to buy uh, or to have, it's going to be the cheapest one is going to be bundle B. So bundle B is B better option and there we go